All right, folks, something a little different today. So obviously you can see that this is uh, not going to employ the market replay. Uh, the market is open. So it's occurring on January 10th, 2024. Uh, the time is always set on trading view to New York local time. And you can see there's a countdown to close on the candlestick price axis. Okay. So I'm trading with the E-mini S&P. And the question that I'm going to pose to you is if ICT was to trade with a funded account and he were he was rather able to use a hundred thousand dollars of simulated capital over the span of a period of time and then using ten of them okay so you see a lot of these fellows out there they got these these accounts that are linked together and they have this uh, you see these relative equal highs here that's what we're going to aim for today so we'll just do that like that and I'll probably take something off inside this little area here because that's a premium array it's a fair value gap in the form, in the form of sell side and balance buy side and efficiency okay so uh, I'm doing this with a account that my son usually uses so he, he practices or I'll do something and he'll go in and back test it okay so uh, I'm showing here the math is based on this is the account that I'd be trading and the assumption would be if I was trading this simulated account with the funded account firm and then I had nine other accounts copying whatever I do in this account so because I don't have a trade copier I don't know how to I don't even know how to do a trade copier to be honest with you um, we're going to have to use the math of 100 contracts, which will be the equivalent of me trading 10 contracts per individual $100,000 funded account. Okay, so that we, we understand each other and the math behind everything. So uh, that's the business here. Now you might look at this and say, well, that's a lot of money. Well, first of all, you're trading with simulated money. So I'm not sure why anybody is um, making a big deal about being seven figure funded because you don't have seven figures unless you can go out and write a check for seven figures you're, you don't have seven figures so if each individual account was being implemented here with this same setup here same gearing same risk um, it's only seven hundred fifty dollars so it's less than one percent or what the equivalent would be of three quarters of one percent risk but with the intent to parlay these accounts up for the express purposes of trying to reach a million dollars inside of a span of six to 12 months. Uh, I don't know why you guys aren't, you know, at least thinking like this, you know, you're trying to risk everything on every single trade over leveraging everything. And for the sake of just trying to have uh, online clout. So using this gearing here, we're going to drop down into a one minute chart or follow along with it. And right up in here, this is a really nice little area. I suspect maybe a initial draw so we'll, we'll, not, we'll note that right there okay so there's buy stops resting right above that and it's a minor buy side liquidity pool And up here, is that 15-minute uh, relative equal high. So we'll note that as buy side. All right, so what that means is when you're annotating while you're learning, uh, I would add, by the way, if I was using a smaller leverage and not trying to do the uh, presentation I'm trying to showcase here as a fair value gap with an order block, uh, that is about to send us up into this area here. So that's the business there. Uh, but this, this is how you would annotate your charts. That way, when you're looking at the lower time frames, referring to higher time frame, PD arrays, uh, when your annotations are placed in your chart, you want to make them 
useful uh, because you may have a level that's highlighted and I'm guilty of this when sometimes I'm doing a, a presentation or a recording an actual trade account that's live or even if it's a paper traded demo account um, if you see me having certain annotations shown on the chart you may not really know what that level is unless I've drawn it out or made specific, specific attention to it so when you're annotating your chart you want to make them useful to you so like for instance you know because we were looking at the 15 minute time frame that let's go back up to it that's these right here and because of that uh, that's what the REH stands for so relative equal highs and it's buy side and it's derived from the 15 minute time frame otherwise if I'm just showing you this time frame here or even worse if I was showing you something like a, a 15 second chart it, you would have no context as to why I would even have these levels on the chart so it's real important that as you annotate your charts you want to be I guess um, mindful of what you're annotating and making sure you're very organized about what you're doing for logging purposes and journaling because it's real important uh, every business that's aiming to be successful and continuously growing in profitability they always manage their key performance indicators that's KPIs so if you're not doing that and that's largely attributed to journaling um, logging your progress monitoring your psychology each time you're taking a trade uh, your post trade psychology trying not to get too sugar high or you know become a sourpuss about you know taking a loss or having drawdown you can probably hear my puppies in the background they're in their kennels so you're going to see there's that uh, little lucky fair value gap entry right there that i said i would have taken if i wouldn't have been in this trade that right there that is your silver bullet that type of trade that's that's really what i'm going to be doing in the robin's cup in 2024 that's all i don't need to do all these other big ones okay if to do that it would only take me about uh i don't know nine weeks and i'd, I'd win <laughs> but uh i kind of like want to make it realistic this year and start with the very least and try to do i guess i don't know trying to maximize the the power and efficiency of proper money management and the leverage of compound interest doing the same thing which is the least in effort but letting the computations and effects of proper money management using compound interest to do all the heavy lifting for me so right away we're at about forty thousand dollars you got forty thousand dollars so the number one day trader on youtube um, with the 10 contracts or the 10 accounts uh, this is what they should be doing if they're the number one day trader on YouTube and uh, this is an annual salary doing what you see a lot of the folks out there trying to do um, let me tell you something if you know how to trade and you can learn how to do that from my YouTube channel for free it just takes time and effort but if you learn how to do this folks you literally can go out there and become a millionaire in front of everyone and cancel anybody else's jawboning and you don't even need to use your own money like your these funded account companies out there uh, they're not going to let you do this a lot and you'll probably be banned okay <laughs> but uh th these are the skill sets that are made available to you on this youtube channel and if it wasn't something that i believe that couldn't be done by everyone else out there that had enough time invested in trying to learn it uh, then i wouldn't say that it's possible now is it possible for every one of you to do it absolutely not because you know, most of you are going to quit. You're not going to be diligent about trading and training yourself and being disciplined. So you have to work that out. It's a new year. If you haven't made you know, resolutions to improve your personal responsibility, uh, your accountability, and your discipline, you know, these are all facets that go along with becoming a consistently profitable trader. If you don't have those traits, you need to acquire them because you won't be in this business long if you don't have them. So uh, right away, we've already smoked the average uh, YouTuber, even when they are over leveraging their multiple accounts and eventually losing the accounts at a later time. So 
the math I was doing looking at this when the question was brought up, you know, how long would it take for a seven figure real equity to be present so that way you could basically be done? You know, use the use the funded account companies. You know, you don't have to do this like all 10 in one company like but uh if i'm a i'm a math geek okay and a money management geek and obviously a trade nut so um i'm a little bit of a of a freak when it comes to uh finding intricate ways to do something better than anybody else so what i would do is i would go with several companies and try to do the one hundred thousand dollar accounts you don't need the 150 um, you can do this obviously with uh, you know the smaller accounts too, but if you really know what you're doing and you know how to trade and you can make really short order of your efforts in time and do things like this. If you really know how to trade within uh, 20, 20 trades you know that are very, very high probability, uh, very easy setups, uh, when you have that, you can do things like this. You know, it's... It's really easy to do once you know what it is I've taught you to do. And obviously, if you're making about $50,000, know, 20 of them net you out at a million dollars. Then you can walk around with your chest out and have a real reason to do so. Hope you found this insightful. Until I talk to you next time, be safe.